afternoon. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, it's Wednesday, November 30th. Almost into almost into December and almost to the end of the year. Uh, it's getting late afternoon here. Mama's gone, and she went up to visit her sister for the day, and it's kind of quiet. And so I wanted to make wanted to make another video. Um, had I've had some conversations in the comment section on the channel this week not confrontational actually they've been very courteous and very polite we've had some uh some good discussions uh they've been discussions that i think a lot of folks would be surprised that i would have such a a um peaceful conversation with folks from this these particular areas but the conversations were good and coupled with a lot of the comments that I've had, this particular subject's been on my mind and, and I wanna try to address it today and see if we can address it. <coughs> Excuse me. I wanna talk about the weakness and the danger of labels. Now let's, let's start out really super simple. All right, let's start out with the horseman, horsemanship world. I have people contact me, they're like, Dwayne, I'm looking at buying a horse, and I found this horse, and they've got it listed as Greenbroke. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It means absolutely nothing. Because the problem is, there is no definitive definition set down in stone somewhere as to what Greenbroke means. So... To one person, they could say, my horse is green broke. That means I can put a saddle on it, I can get on it, and it won't buck. Two out of three times. Um, and so it's green broke, and you can take it and finish it from here. Uh, a lot of professional trainers, a green broke horse, is you can do absolutely anything on that horse. It may still be in a snaffle bit, um, but you can do anything you want with that horse on the ground or in the saddle, and all it needs is to be taken and polished for a particular discipline. Totally different. It's a label. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, if you put the label on somebody, that's a cowboy. What does that label mean? It actually doesn't mean anything. If you're in the military and you have somebody in the military who doesn't give order or doesn't take orders real well, and they kind of tend to go off on their own and charge and and they say man that's that's a cowboy he's just um he just in his own thing um you uh you know you see people people who wear hats and boots and and they go uh line dancing you know on friday saturday night and and uh yeah you know my buddy we all met the other week well which one was the cowboy well, maybe he was a cowboy, maybe he wasn't. Guys come in and they start riding bulls at a very young age. They can't ride horses, they can't work horses, they don't do anything, they just ride bulls. They wear a hat and a big belt buckle and wring their jeans and uh, people label them as cowboys. What kind of cowboy are you? I'm a bull rider. Now to some folks that doesn't constitute that label is not accurate, that's not a cowboy. But to them, maybe it is, to other folks it is. And my point is not to whether that's actually an accurate label, they're actually cowboys or not. That's not my point at all. My point at all, my point is that labels can be so broad and people can define themselves by whatever label they want. And they will only accept their definition of that label. And I actually have folks get on the channel and say, you. You're, you're fake you ain't no cowboy now I don't know why they say that um, but I know what I have done and I know where I've worked and I know what I've accomplished and I know what I'm capable of and I know who has paid me to do what so they have their label of what is a cowboy uh, and I have mine and our labels don't match but there's no definitive concrete definition sending somewhere that says this is a cowboy and so 
you've got this going on. Um, just talking about labels, I am a Christian. Uh, I believe in God. I believe in the God of the Bible. I believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and I believe man needs redeemed, and man's only hope for redemption is in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now, to me, that's a definition of a Christian. But there's a lot of people around this world who call themselves, who label themselves a Christian, that to me, I look at them, I say, that's not a Christian. Uh, they don't behave like a Christian. They don't follow the teachings of Christ, which is what a Christian is. And so they have their label. And if you ask them, what religion are you? Well, I'm a Christian. And so their definition of that label and my definition of that label is two different things. And you're not going to have a profitable discussion regarding a particular subject if you can't even degree, agree on the definition of the label placed at the head of that subject. Um, names and labels um i it's known on here i i read and and i i like jordan peterson all right i love listening to his things and and uh, people get on and they throw labels they say jordan peterson is a neo-nazi well i <clears throat> i looked it up because that's just what i do and um and i've read the paper where that laid all this stuff out why he is but I've listened to his own words, and I've drawn up my own conclusion to the label, and this, and he's not. It's just a label. Somebody takes something, and they throw the label. Uh, I've had a couple discussions this week on the, on the channel with folks who, are, who label themselves who are from the trans community. Now, the discussion was not about the issue of being trans okay it wasn't the discussion was the label being used and what was the label transphobic now i did not say anything against them or for for the position and the view that they hold and they consider themselves trans i don't know if they were male and they consider themselves female now i don't i don't know which i don't know and and i don't care that's not what the discussion was about <clears throat> but I, I have looked at the issue, and I'm not, we're not going to hammer out the issue. That's not what we're talking about here. All right, listen to me. Stop, close your mouth, open your ears, and listen to me. Some of you guys are really starting to irritate me on that channel because you don't actually hear the words that I'm saying. You draw conclusions and draw answers before you actually listen to the context and listen to what I'm saying. All right? I have looked at the issue. From a scientific standpoint, from a philosophical standpoint, and from a faith religious standpoint. And when it comes to the issue of trans, I myself personally am not on board. Now listen to me. Listen to me. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean anything. Because I'm not the final answer. I'm not the one that judges these things. So I look at that and I have the right and the intelligence. I'm not dumb enough to sit there and say, I can't, I don't know what, you know. I look at it and I say, well, this is where I come down. This is the side of the issue that I come down. And you say, well, this is the side of the issue that I come down on. Okay. All right. So now we both know where we are. Now, it is not my position to start um, ranting on you and telling you all the things that I feel are wrong about your position. One of these days, I believe, in fact, I know for a fact, one of these days I'm going to have to stand before God and I'm going to have to give an account for me, just me. And Bubba, that's not something I look forward to. Uh, I got way more on my plate than I'm ever going to want to chew up, just giving an answer to me. I don't have the desire or the arrogance to give an answer to you and to stand there and say, that's wrong, you can't, that's that, that's that. I don't have to come down on the side, same side of the table as you do 
right? But I don't have to attack you. But at the same time, when you look across the table and say, well, you don't fully agree with me on this, you don't see this the way I do, then you're transphobic. Okay, well, that just means people who use that are ignorant. A phobia is an unthinking, unreasoning fear. And someone who looks at a subject, looks at it scientifically, looks at it philosophically, looks at it through the prism of their faith and their religion and their belief system, and comes to a calm, logical conclusion that, no, that's not how I see that. There's no phobia involved. And the discussion we had is not on whether I agreed with trans or with homosexuality or with feminism or with any of this stuff. That's not what this channel is. That's not who I am. That's not what we're on here for, okay? Um, what I want to stop is the pointless labels, okay? The labels. Just because someone doesn't agree with you doesn't mean you can throw a broad label on them and actually make it stick. Because you do not hold the authority of the definition of that label, the sole definition of that label. You don't have the authority to whether define whether someone is a cowboy or not. Based on their definition. Okay? We just, we need to chill out, folks. Now, I've gotten a lot of grief for, I made the one video about loneliness, and, uh, and I talked about these women who self-label themselves as feminists, and, uh, and they're out there on social media and out there rejoicing at the destruction of men just because the men are men. Now, I really got a lot of grief for that, because people were upset because they thought I threw a label on something and the label didn't fit them. They're not like that. I didn't throw a label on anything. I used the label that they call themselves. Okay, they call themselves feminists and they're extremely hateful by their own actions. So they're hateful feminists. Now, feminism is one of those things. There are some women who say, I'm a feminist because I believe that women should be equal to men. They should not be subservient. Uh, if a woman is standing shoulder to shoulder with a man and they're doing the exact same job, the exact same quality, I believe they should get paid the same. I don't have a problem with that definition. I mean, if that definition, you could label me as a feminist. All right? Now, there's something that you don't hear every day. But not everybody holds your definition of your label. There are people who have themselves labeled with the same label that you're labeling yourself, but they don't hold the same definition of that label that you do. And when somebody is having a conversation and they're discussing that label from that person, from the philosophy that they're holding, that doesn't mean that they're talking about you. We're tearing ourselves apart because we don't listen. We don't listen and we don't deal in context. People will give the context of what they're talking about. Or they should if they have any intelligence at all, any able ability to speak at all. And a lot of times when I speak, who I'm talking to and what I'm talking about is in the context. Listen. The Bible says there's two verses in the Bible in, in one chapter in the Bible that uh, says Judas went out and hanged himself. Go and do thou likewise. Now, if I use that same logic that so many people use listening to me or listening to others, I can then go on a rant and say Jesus said that we should go out and hang ourselves by taking things out of context by taking things out of um, the center and the subject of what's being spoken. You want to do that? Acts chapter, I believe it's Acts chapter 19. In one verse, Paul says, we let her drive. 
And you go down and a little further in the chapter, he says, all hope of our being saved was then taken away. So then we can say, you know, the Bible teaches that women drivers are dangerous. I'm not going to believe the Bible. I'm not going to follow the Bible because the Bible is against women drivers. The Bible says women can't drive, and if women are going to drive, then there's no hope in us being saved. That's how you approach these talks a lot of times. You take this phrase and this line, and you take this one over here, and you say, well, see, this is what he's saying. But you don't listen to the context. You don't listen to the heart. You don't even watch enough videos to find out who I am and what I'm about. And then you just create damage and you create more anger for yourself and more bitterness for yourself and more trouble for yourself that's just not necessary. Not necessary. Now I touched on this on the last video uh, about context, all right? Words are important with context. And labels, labels are weak. Labels are false. I mean, labels are necessary, but they don't have the power and the weight that in this day and age we tend to give to them. So step back, and when somebody throws a label, just like we talked about in the last video, ask yourself, what is the definition of that label to them? And it may put a whole nother color on things for you, okay? If we're going to start settling things in the culture of this country, we've got to be able to start talking. We've got to start having dialogues. We've got to start discussing things. <coughs> and people can't talk. They can't discuss. Because, they, you know, I watch Pierce Morgan and, you know, I watch some of these guys on there. doesn't matter where they stand. All right, I'm not talking about that. But you can watch them and they're not actually listening to the people they're talking to. As the person is talking to them, they're formulating their response. They're formulating their rebuttal. They're formulating their next gotcha question. And that's how so many folks these days, that's how they approach a discussion with somebody that they figure is probably from the other side of any given spectrum. So just slow down. Be careful. Okay? All right. About let that go out, but I think we caught it this time. Alec Bradley, Black Market Esteli. Now, um, the, uh, there is a website company that contacted me. It's Cigar Place. Cigarplace.biz or .com. Either one goes to the same place. And they're like, Dwayne, we, we'd like to start supplying your cigars. And uh, I said, okay. So they sent me some cigars to try, and they said, look, just try them. And, uh, you know, just talk about them like you normally do. So I'm just being upfront and honest with you, all right? This Black Market Esteli by Alec Bradley, this is one of the perfect examples of if you get a cigar and you're not 100% excited about it the first time, wait a few weeks and give it another chance. I got one of these in Salida, Colorado, back when I was cowboying in Sawatch. And uh, I had a, a predetermined idea of what it was going to taste like. My palate had already determined this is what it was going to be like. So when I got in the truck and headed back over Poncha Pass and uh, fired the thing up, I was disappointed because I had a preconceived idea. And so I didn't get another one for a while. But I looked it up, and it's actually Nicaraguan uh, filler, Nicaraguan wrapper, and with a Nicaraguan, I believe, and a Honduras binder two different binders um and you, and i've gotten a couple of them since this is like my third one and this one i'm really enjoying it because i kind of knew when i went into it i'm like okay it's got this little bit of a palette change here uh, that i wasn't looking for before and uh, and it's turning out to be to be a nice stick alec bradley makes good quality cigars okay they do hands down um and uh this one is a, it's a Nicaragua mostly, but there's enough Honduran in just to give it a, a nice, uh, a nice little change there. A nice, nice little tinge on the edge. Um, and, uh, but you guys have been asking me and getting on there for a long time, Dwayne, where do you order online? Where do you order your cigars? Well, now I get them all from cigarplace.com uh, or .biz. 
and uh, it's so rare that I plug anybody, um, but they've earned it, all right? So if, if you want to go over and check them out, I appreciate it. Uh, but anyhow, a couple other things I want to cover. I should have done this at the beginning. I do not have a WhatsApp. I don't even know what a WhatsApp is, all right? And I don't have some app or something called Telegram. I don't have it. Uh, I don't even know what that is. So there's some people in the comment section on the channel. They're thieves and they're liars and it's spam. And if you get something that has my logo that says it's WhatsApp, hey, give me a call, give me a text or whatever, that's a scam. It ain't me. This is me, all right? That ain't me. Okay, so those of you who've, who've been suckered in by that, I apologize. Uh, and every time I see one, I try to catch them and I try to delete them and block them from the channel. Uh, but apparently I hadn't got them all yet. And so I apologize for that. The other thing is, is I just started a Rumble channel. I'm going over to Rumble. I'm not moving everything to Rumble right now, but I am going to start posting more of the cigar pipe stuff over there. And uh, so it's Dry Creek Wranglers. I believe it's just Dry Creek Wranglers. So if you want to go check that out. And, uh, and eventually I will. It'll be a long, slow process. But eventually I will start moving stuff over to Rumble. Okay? So there's that. And uh, guys, just be peaceful. And to do that, you got to get the trucks around you to turn off their jake brakes. I don't know if y'all can hear that over the microphone. But it's insane. All right? Listen, just stop and think. Just stop and think and put yourself in somebody else's shoes and try to figure out sometimes, you know, what do they actually mean by that? And I think you'll find sometimes they don't mean what you mean saying the same thing. And maybe things aren't as automatically as strident as we try to make them out to be. Okay? All right. Um, hope this helps you guys, and we'll catch you all next time.